Hello dear students and everybody who is watching my webinar. My name is Miroslava Vandličková. I am from the University of Žilina in the Slovak Republic. I am a teacher at the Faculty of Security Engineering, especially at the, at the Department of Fire Engineering. My uh, webinar uh, will be about uh, explosions of flammable industrial gases. Uh, the learning objectives of uh, my webinar are theory of flammable industrial dust explosions, flammability, reactivity and dust explosion hazards, characteristics, fire and explosive properties of flammable dust, uh, then health properties of flammable industrial dust, process safety incidents in particular types of industry and risk prevention and controls. To understand the basic principles of dust explosion, I need to explain several definitions. An explosion of dust is a rapid combustion of fine particles suspended in the air, particularly in an enclosed location. Flammable dust means a set of pulverized particles of the solid substance which exist in the gassy environment. These dust particles have the dimensions lower than 0.5 mm. Aerosol in the scientific era means dispersed dust in the air it means that it is in a world state. Air gel means settled dust in a layer. Difference between fires and explosions is in the rate of released energy. Fires release energy slowly, explosions release energy very rapidly. Fires can result from explosions, and explosions can result from fires. The analogy example is, for example, automobile tire, where compressed air within tire contain energy. If energy is released slowly through a nozzle, tire is harmlessly deflated. But if tire ruptures suddenly, and all energy within the compressed tire releases rapidly, the result is dangerous explosion. Other definitions which are needed to be explained are deflagration, detonation and explosion. Deflagration means a propagation of a combustion zone at a speed that is less than the speed of sound in the unreacted medium. Detonation is a propagation of a combustion zone at a velocity that is greater than the speed of sound in the unreacted medium. And explosion means the bursting or rupture of an enclosure or a container due to the development of internal pressure from deflagration. So it means that explosion could be deflagration or detonation. Deflagration could be transmitted to detonation. There are some situations when a subsonic flame may accelerate into a supersonic flame. This deflagration to detonation is difficult to predict, but it occurs most often when eddy currents or other turbulence are present in the flames. This can happen if the fire is partially confined or obstructed. Such events have occurred in industrial sites where extremely combustible gases have escaped and when ordinary deflagration fires encounter explosive materials. 
As said before, all process industry accidents fall on three broad categories fire, explosion, and toxic release. Of these, fire is the most common, followed by explosions. Explosion in process industries can be physical or chemical. Thus, explosion belongs to explosion which can occur in unconfined, but more likely in confined space. And this explosion belongs to deflagration or detonation. And as said before, deflagration or detonation belongs to chemical explosion. Available surface area of industrial flammable dust affect the violence of the explosion. Surface area increases with increasing subdivision. The smaller the median value of dust's particle size, the higher the maximum explosion pressure and the rate of pressure rise. The higher the specific particle surface are, the higher the maximum rate of pressure rise. The conditions uh, of creating of dust uh, explosions we can see at this scheme of dust explosion pentagon. Here we have five uh, basic conditions. The first one is that we need to have fuel to, to burn. The second one is that this fuel uh, needs to be dispersed uh, of high concentration uh, in uh, the air. Then we need uh, to have oxygen uh, to sustain the fire. The third one the condition is the ignition and ignition source of the uh, heat. And uh, the last one is the confinement of uh, this uh, fuel within an um, enclosure or structure. Sometimes we need the sixth uh, conditions. We can see it in some literature and it is uh, moisture. As said before, there are five basic elements needed at once. The explosion could be occurred, but the sixth one is moisture, because when fuel contains a higher moisture content, then the dust burning process is extinguished. The curse of the explosion is available to see in this slide as a function of time. In the moment of ignition, we can see the rapid rising of pressure to the maximum explosion pressure. It could be reducted by some anti-explosion measures. The maximum rate of pressure rise is calculated from the maximum slope of a tangent to the steepest part of the curve and the maximum explosion pressure is calculated from the peak height of the curve. About explosion severity of dust cloud speaks so-called deflagration index or explosion severity, KSC. It is calculated according to this rate equation where the ratio of pressure change and time is the maximum rate of pressure and V is the volume of the test vessel in cubic meters. Explosion severity is used for the design of deflagration protection, for example, venting, suppression, containment, and so on. Explosion of flammable industrial dust is a result of a few steps. The first one is that dust settles on flat surfaces. Then some 
so-called event disturbs the settled dust into a cloud. And the third one is that dust cloud is ignited by any effective ignition source. For explosion of flammable industrial dusts, there are important many characteristics of flammable dust. Those are, for example, lower explosive limit, maximum explosion pressure, maximum rate of pressure increasing, minimum ignition energy, ignition temperature of settled dust, and ignition temperature of the world dust, limiting oxygen content, deflagration index KST, minimum explosible concentration, and many, many others. Minimum explosible concentration is a concentration of combustible dust suspended in the air measured in mass per unit volume that will support a deflagration. Lava flammable limit is the lowest concentration of a combustible substance in an oxidizing medium. Then upper flammable limit is the highest concentration of a combustible substance in an oxidizing medium that will propagate a flame. Minimum ignition temperature is the lowest temperature at which ignition occurs. The lowest electrostatic spark energy that is capable of igniting a dust cloud is so-called minimum ignition energy. Its unit is millijoules or joules, and the decreasing in particle size and moisture content means also decreasing of minimum ignition energy and increasing in temperature in dust cloud atmosphere means decreasing of minimum ignition energy. The next one is deflagration index, as we said before, KST. The maximum pressure reached during the course of deflagration is P max. For your better imagination of characteristics of flammable industrial dust, you can see this table in which you have cloud ignition energy, minimum explosive concentration, maximum pressure developed, rate of pressure rise, ignition temperature of cloud, and ignition temperature of layer. In uh, many cases, or uh, flammable industrial dust Portion. We can, uh, we can uh, speak and we can see it in this picture that the primary explosion uh, can cause so-called secondary explosion uh, which can be in uh, many cases uh, much more serious than the primary explosion. For minimum ignition temperature testing in dust layer, Experimental measurements are carried out on an apparatus for determining the minimum ignition temperature according to the procedure in Slovak Technical Standard number 50281, part 2, 1. The scheme of this equipment is in this slide. Minimum ignition temperature in dust layer is the lowest temperature of a heated freestanding surface capable of igniting a dust layer. 
with thicker layers, smoldering or glowing may start at a lower temperature. Test applicable only for materials which will not melt or evaporate before reaching the ignition temperature. Minimum ignition temperature tests provide information on the sensitivity to ignition by hot environments and surfaces of some processing equipment and plant, hot surfaces caused by overheating of bearings and other mechanical parts due to mechanical failure, and by frictional sparks. Then we have maximum exposure temperature for electrical equipment. For minimum ignition temperature testing for real dust, we have an apparatus you can see in this slide. The whole video for the procedure of the whole testing you can see at this website on YouTube. We can find many types of flammable industrial dust which were present in incidents, in agricultural products, or in food industry, in metal industry, in plastic dust, in agricultural dust, in pharmaceutical dust, and in many other types of industries. From inorganic uh, chemistry, the types of flammable industrial dust present for percentage. For example, for food industry, it is 23%. In wooden industry, it is 24%. In metal industry, for example, it is about 20%. From plastic dust, it is about 14%. For example, coal means about 8% and other types of industry is about 7%. According to the standard of ATEX, we have three basic ATEX zones for dust. When the dust is continually present, it is zone 2-0. If the dust is likely to occur in normal operation occasionally, it is at zone 21. If the dust is not likely to occur in normal operation and only for very short durations, it is at zone 2, two. The gas zone, for example, are for gases 0, 1, and 2. In the history, many of explosions of flammable industrial dust occurred. One of uh, them was, for example, the explosion of Imperial Sugar Raffinery in 2008 in Georgia, United States of America. 14 people were killed and 40 were injured. Almost the whole Imperial Sugar Raffinery was damaged. For example, in January 2003, a powerful explosion and fire ripped through the West Pharmaceutical Services rubber manufacturing plant in North Carolina. It took the lives of six employees and injuring 38 others, including two firefighters who responded to the accident. The blast occurred without warning at 1.28 p.m., during a routine workday and could be heard 
25 miles from the plant. A student at a school more than half a mile away was injured by shattered glass at these explosions. In August 2014, a massive metal dust explosion happened in Kunshan in China. It happened in a wheel hub polishing workshop. 75 people were killed and 185 were badly injured. How the explosion of flammable wooden dust can occur, you can see in the video on this website. Except of property damages, the explosions of flammable industrial dust have also health risk. The primary blast injury, which are injuries due to the blast wave itself. Then secondary blast injury, those are injuries due to missiles being propelled by blast force. And tertiary blast injury, which are injuries due to impact with another object. Except of the injuries caused by explosions of flammable dust, the health risks of dust are also for human breathing system, lungs, and mucous membranes. Some of the dust can cause also cancer. For explosions of flammable industrial dust, and for the prevention, ATEX directive is valid. ATEX is an abbreviation for atmosphere explosible, and at the same time, ATEX is the abbreviated name of the European directive from the year 2014 34 concerning the placing on the market of explosion proof electrical and mechanical equipment, components, and protective systems. It came into force on July the 1st, 2003, and all new equipment and protective systems have been subject to it since that date. So there are two ATEX directives, the ATEX 95, and the ATEX 137. Mm. Directive 34 from the year 2014 defines specifications for the provision and use of electrical and non-electrical equipment in an explosive atmosphere. The essential safety and health protection requirements for equipment are defined in a classification system. The requirements defined by these two directives for manufacturers and plant operators are shown in this table. Prevention of dust explosion can be done by eliminating fuel if possible, by preventing dust suspensions, by adding moisture, by keeping fuel below lower flammable limit, by reducing oxygen below minimum oxygen concentration, and by eliminating ignition sources. Mm. Explosion protection can be divided into active and passive protection. Active protection is primary or secondary. Passive protection means constructions which are built in processing plants. 
primary protection, those are measures to prevent or to minimize the formation of an explosive mixture. It is to eliminate at least one of the factors necessarily present in the explosion of flammable dust. Secondary protection means measures to prevent ignition of the explosive mixture. To eliminate an explosive dust-oxygen mixture, it is possible to use industrial vacuum cleaners or adding inner substances to areas with an explosive atmosphere to keep the oxygen concentration below the limit. Secondary protection is the elimination of initiation resources, which may be hot surfaces, mechanical sparks, and so on. In the end of my webinar, I would like to say that I am pleasured that you have watched my lecture and uh, I would like to say thank you for your attention.